so excellent. Thanks. The next segment on the program is also a prepared speech. It's going to be the fourth speech out of the first year on manual. It's going to be done by someone who's been a head chef before and could probably speak a thing or two regarding the technical side of nautical engineering. But this person also says that he, he does hold an interest in amazing people. If we can welcome now, warmly to the lectern, with his speech, the man who saved the world, Shay Turner. Save the world. Who is he? Well, the story starts. It was October 1962, deep in the Arctic Circle, at a top secret Russian, then Soviet Union naval base, docked at that base with four nuclear submarines, each with four nuclear warheads on board. The crew didn't know why they were there or where they were going. There was an envelope rushed from the Kremlin, given to the commander, and not to be opened until they were at sea. In 1962, there was a Cold War between America and the Soviet Union. We all know this, we thought it was a bad thing. But seriously, do we know how bad it really was? America had 31,000 nuclear warheads. 31,000. Russia had 45,000 nuclear warheads. Each one more powerful than Hiroshima, which killed 200,000 people. That's 76,000 warheads that could kill 200,000 people each. And America, and the facing America, and the Russians are facing America. It was what they called mutually assured destruction. No one could go to war. Back in the Arctic Circle, the submarine fleet left. The commander of the submarine fleet, Vasily Arkhipov, opened his orders, looked at them, and it said, Havana, Cuba. He was a smart man. He knew that he was going to Cuba, and he knew he had nuclear weapons on board, which means he knew he may have had to kill a lot of people on his missions. Little insight on how a nuclear submarine works at that point in time. There's two keys. The political officer held one, and the captain of the submarine held the other one. Both had to be inserted into the ignition box and turned to launch the missile. But on this particular mission, the fleet commander, Mr. Akipov, had final say. He was like God on this mission, so he had the final say. Eventually, they made it down to Cuba, only 200 miles off the US coast. It took them a while to get down there. Diesel submarines, it was very hot on board. But now, finally, they're in fire range of New York, Los Angeles, and Washington. They were there, ready to shot, shoot the nukes, fully loaded. During this time, the US military had some intelligence that something was going on. So Kennedy ordered the entire US fleet to find them. But not just to find them and destroy them. Kennedy, in his wisdom, said, I want you to find them, and I want you to bring them to the surface and send them home. We all know Kennedy was a bit of a peacekeeper. So for two weeks, the entire US naval fleet of ultrasound scaled the waters. Meanwhile, the submariners run under, under the water in appalling conditions, 50 degrees plus, very cramped. And all they could hear during this time was Russian television and radio stations. They had no communication with Moscow. During the time, they, they had no communication whatsoever with Moscow, so their world revolved around listening to propaganda in America.
America, we're at war. There's going to be a nuclear war. We're at war with Russia. So eventually, they found some submarines, a US fleet. They actually only found one. Three of the submarines got away. With ultrasound, it goes bing, bing, bing. What's it like in a submarine when you hear ultrasound? It sounds a lot like a hammer beating, like bang, bang, bang. And this was constant for two weeks in the submarine. The men were there, 50 plus degrees. Just imagine how tormenting that must have been for them. So they found them. They saw, okay, we'll bring them to the surface. At the time, the Americans did not know this nuclear submarine had enough firepower to wipe out half of their country. So they were a bit blasé, oh, we found them, we'll bring them up. There was a slight problem. Certain signaling methods to bring submarines to the surface. The Americans send five depth charges, shallow ones, to bring them to the surface. The Russians send three to let the person only come to the surface and surrender. So the Americans drop one depth charge of pain, went off. The Russians think, OK, we'll wait for another two. Pain. Second one went off. Hot, cramped inside the condition. They didn't know what was going on. Third one. Pain. That's it. It's time to come up. And then suddenly, another one, and they thought, we are under attack. We are completely under attack. The men were scared, obviously, completely scared. They thought they were under attack. Like I said, 50 plus degrees, nowhere to go. They thought they were under attack. So the submarine commander screamed across to his political officer and said, I want the key. We're going to kill the Americans. He grabbed the key off the political officer and inserted it into the ignition himself. Turned the key. The nuclear weapon was armed. It was armed. So this weapon was facing New York. Wiped out the city with the press of a single button. That means it would have started a nuclear war. 31,000 devices in America and 45,000 in Russia. The world would have ended. The death of the entire planet would have been over within the flick of a simple wrist. But, by chance, lucky enough for all of us, we're still here, by chance, the fleet commander, Mr. Arkhipov, was actually on that submarine that didn't get away. And he was watching all this unfold. Very intelligent man. He looked to the right and he saw what was happening. As I said before, his word was gospel. It was God. And he made the decision to not fire. So, he said, we're going to race to the surface. They raced to the surface. The American fleet said, hey, hello, how are you? Can you please move, move on? Sent them back to Russia. <coughs> America's completely unaware what just took place. So he returned to Russia, unfortunately not as a hero. He didn't follow orders. He was looked upon as someone that was not very good stead in the community, not a good soldier. So he's the only man in history that can say he actually saved humanity, he saved the world. So please, let's not forget Vasily Arkhipov, the man who saved the world. Thank you very much, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you. Suspenseful anecdote. Storytelling speech. I got a lot out of that one. How to say it? That is what the objective of the speech tonight was from the Competent Communicator Manual, speech number four for Shay. Words are powerful, they convey your message and influence the audience and its perceptions of you. Objectives of the speech. A couple of them are select the right words and sentences, structure and communicate your ideas clearly, accurately and vividly to the audience. I'm just going to follow the guidelines of the um, objections of the speech. I'll give you my answers and then I will uh, go into other details.
detail of the speech as well. Was the speech topic appropriate for this particular assignment? The answer is yes. Did the speaker use simple and short, clear words? I thought so. Very clear, very easy to understand. Did the speaker use vivid, description, descriptive words and create mental images? I thought he did it extremely well. Um, did the speaker use words that had more than one meaning or were inaccurate? I didn't pick any of that up. Um, were, the, were the speaker sentences short, simple and understandable? Yes. Did the speaker use rhetorical devices to enhance his ideas or speech? Yes. Did the speaker avoid jargon and unnecessary words? Yes. Did the speaker use proper grammar and pronunciation? Yes. Was the speech purpose clear? Yes. Was the speech effectively organised? Uh, yes. And there's two other questions there which I'll answer in a moment. So, has the objectives of the communicator manual been met? The answer is yes. <laughs> well done. <clears throat> so the, the speech in, in summary was um, the Syria Ark Yupov, a Russian, uh, he's the man who saved the world because he chose not to launch missiles and if he did launch missiles we could have started World War III. That was very clear throughout the, the whole speech and Shay clearly gave us that story which we could follow but I want him to talk about uh, the story. I thought Shay's speech was very clear and easy to follow. He had excellent pause. And if you've got good pause, it's easy for the audience to follow the speech and understand the prescriptive words that you're using when you speak. A lot of people speak too quickly. When you speak too quickly, people can't follow you because they're always trying to catch up. So if you speak slowly, people can easily understand. And that's really the point of tonight's uh, speech. It was good to listen with the ear. He had a good, strong voice. He spoke slowly and clearly. He used very descriptive words. And he was hammering. He did it at a few different times. But he was reiterating the noises of the submarine. The bing, the bing, the bing, the hammering. Um, and I thought he did that very well. But he also did it with the word depth charges. Um, three times, four times, five times. He used the devices during his speech so the message could come across to us very clearly. Points for improvement of the speech. Shay is a walker. He's a talker. What I do when I speak, I do the walk. And you know what? I do the talk. And the walk. And I walk from side to side. I've been told by other people it can be distracting. When distracting when you're walking around. Also, you focus all of your attention down here to the left and to the right when you're talking. Just lift it up a bit and look Trevor in the eye and then walk around the audience. That's my only point for improvement. And it will take time until you, you lose that. Because I still do it. I do the little shuffle, left and right. And you do the walk two metres left and right. And probably if you're inside a big audience, big auditorium, fantastic. But when you're in a small room like this, it can be a bit distracting. But in summary, I thought the speech was excellent, it was very easy to understand, and that was the purpose of the speech. Thank you, Shay.